Afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm Jean McCarthy. I'm President Biden's National Climate Advisor. And on the stage, I am joined by Senator Granholm from the Department of Energy. I'm sorry, Secretary Granholm from the Department of Energy, Secretary Buttigieg from the Department of Transportation. We have Representative Jim Cooper from the great state of Tennessee. We have Brian Deese, who's the director of our National Economic Council, Celeste Drake, from as the director of our Made in America program. And we have Mitch Landrew, who is our infrastructure czar. And we also, of course, have the president of the United States. So we are ready. Listen, this is such an exciting day, and we're here to celebrate this day. And it's an exciting day specifically for electric vehicles in America. I just have to say we are all charged up. <laughs> all right, all right, Th that was a joke. And we're here to celebrate uh, because we know electric vehicles are absolutely an essential tool if we hope to address our transportation sector in the emissions, both those that impact climate change, but also those that impact our families, our kids, because they impact air quality. But you may not know, unless you've driven an electric vehicle before, that once you drive one, you ain't ever going back because their performance and the cost savings they offer to, to our consumers are absolutely essential as we move forward. It is what is going to make the transition to an all-electric future possible. And to support this, we're making historic investments through the President's bipartisan infrastructure law, including the build-out of a nationwide network of 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations. And through the President's Made in America policies, we are spurring investment in, in American manufacturing. And you know what that means. It means good paying jobs, building electric vehicles and chargers with IBEW members leading the way. And it's exciting to know that we are going to make charging stations accessible across the entire country, whether you're in a rural or an urban community. So today, we are kicking off by allowing me the pleasure of introducing you to Jane Hunter, who is the CEO of Tritium. As a key manufacturer of electric vehicle chargers, Tritium is investing in our electric future. And that's a clear signal that our country has incredible opportunities ahead of us, and I could not be more excited, and we look forward to working with Tritium and others who are stepping up big time to advance our climate goals while creating high quality jobs right here in the United States. Jane. Thank you, Gina, and good afternoon, Mr. President, Secretaries Granholm and Buttigieg, and of course to Jim Cooper from Tennessee. It's a pleasure to join you all here today. I'm Jane Hunter, the CEO of Tritium, a global leader in DC fast charge technology for electric vehicles. It would be an understatement to say that this has been a very exciting month for Tritium. We listed on the NASDAQ, we rang the bell on Australia Day on the 26th, and now we have this opportunity to share Tritium's US manufacturing plans with the American people. Tritium is a great story of American-Australian partnership, continuing our two countries' historic alliance in world conflicts, trade, the environment, and technology. The Tritium mission is really simple. Two words, electrify, transportation. This vision of transport powered by renewable energy has inspired our team since 2012, when we built our first fast charger. A seismic technology change is on foot here. Electric cars, vans, buses, aircrafts, boats. These are the future of transportation. And for nations to prosper and gain economic benefit from this transition, they must be leaders in both the EV uptake on one hand and the supporting infrastructure and energy rollout on the other. Nations that are the forefront of this electric future will benefit economically and will see a very substantial improvement in human health and the environment by acting rapidly and with courage. 
And that's what America will achieve with President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law. In the 1950s, the United States had the foresight to build the unparalleled US highway system. This administration's forward-thinking vision to electrify that system is going to help American families. It decouples the cost of running the family car or driving to work from the fluctuations of the price per barrel of foreign oil. With this charging network in place, Americans are going to have access to fast, safe and reliable charging, enabling drivers to cross the wide open plains of the US, the mountains, the national parks and navigate the metropolises from New York to LA. Tritium has global expertise manufacturing and installing fast chargers across 41 countries and we applaud President Biden's ambitious goals of electrifying the federal fleet and the equitable deployment of a national network of 500,000 EV chargers. President Biden's transport electrification policies have contributed to enormous demand for Tritium's products right here in the US and that directly led us to pivot and change our global manufacturing strategy. And today, we could not be prouder to announce that we'll be opening a US manufacturing facility in Tennessee, expected to begin production this fall. This facility will have an initial capacity to build more than 10,000 fast charger units per year with room to expand to 30,000. The factory will create American clean tech jobs, employing more than 500 people over the next five years. And we thank the governor and the state of Tennessee for welcoming Tritium with open arms. With the help of the residents of Tennessee, we'll be building our largest factory globally right here in the United States, assembling world-class by America compliant fast chargers made in America and trucked across the continent. By enabling EV owners to drive anywhere, Tritium is going to help fulfill the US target for 50% of new cars sold to be electric by the year 2030 and will support US economic ambitions to grow onshore manufacturing in advanced technologies while also growing jobs that don't leave anyone behind. These can be trained up in just a few weeks. Let me finish up by saying that we're all privileged to be living in this time of an historic shift in the way transport is powered and autonomously controlled. A bipartisan law has been passed which will benefit all Americans and put America at the global forefront of this opportunity. A future with cleaner air, quieter towns and cities awaits the American people, along with more onshore manufacturing and jobs, fuel security and cars which frankly are just a joy to drive and own. This administration's support for US-based manufacturing is a smart economic initiative that will drive companies to create American jobs and Tritium's a great case in point of that. And we look forward to powering American EVs with American made fast chargers designed and hardened in the world's toughest conditions down under. Tennessee, we can't wait to get started. And now it is my honour to introduce the President of the United States. Jane, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I want to thank Secretary Granholm and Buttigieg and uh, Gina McCarthy for being here today, and Congressman Jim Cooper, an old friend who uh, did an awful lot to get this to uh, get this to go in Tennessee. And Governor Bill Lee of Tennessee, he deserves credit as well. He wasn't able to be here today, but he worked hard to help make this happen. Another example of what America can achieve when we come together, Democrats and Republicans, to get things done. The new manufacturing facility of Tritium is, that's announced today is more than just great news for Tennessee. Yes, it's going to create more than 500 good-paying jobs in Tennessee, but it's going to deliver greater dignity and a little more breathing room to workers and their families, and it's going to have a ripple effect beyond and far beyond the one state. This is great news for workers across the country, for an economy, and frankly, for the planet. When we wrote uh, the, and passed the bipartisan infrastructure law, we included $7.5 billion for electric vehicle chargers, like the one Jane brought along today. It's a little thing, as you can see. But all kidding aside, Secretaries Granholm and Buttigieg uh, have been helping lead this effort from our administration. 
And later this week, we're going to announce a state-by-state -state allocation for $5 billion of the funding for these chargers. So states can start making plans to build out what will become a national network of electric vehicle chargers. Tritium's new facility is going to produce up to 30,000 of these chargers every year. They'll use American parts, American iron, American steel, and they'll be installed up and down the highways and carters in our communities all across the country by union workers from the IBW and the Electric Worker and the Electrical Workers Union. So the benefits are going to ripple to thousands of miles in every direction. And, the, and these jobs will multiply in steel mills, small parts suppliers, construction sites all over the country in the years to come. And it's going to help ensure that the American, America leads the world in electric vehicles. China has been the leading that race up to now. But this is about to change because America is building convenient, reliable, equitable national public charging networks. So wherever you live, charging an electric vehicle will be quick and easy. And the foundation will help build Amer help American automakers set the pace for electric vehicles, which means even more good paying jobs producing batteries, materials and parts. That's also going to help save hundreds of billions of gallons of gasoline over time. Serving, uh, saving an average driver who chooses electric vehicle up to $1,000 every year on fuel, making our country more economically competitive, lowering air pollution and keeping families healthier as we tackle climate, the climate crisis. Here's, here's the key point. Announcements like this don't happen by accident. They require a vision and a commitment to build a future that's made in America. I made it clear from day one, when the federal government spends taxpayers' dollars, we're going to buy American. American products made in America, including American component parts. That's why I established the Made in America office at the White House, led by Celeste Drake. She's here on the stage. Where is Celeste? There she is. Celeste Drake. To ensure that the trillion dollars we're investing in infrastructure is spent on American workers and American manufacturing. On the way over here, by the way, I was talking with Gina. Uh, we were talking about uh, we have how many vehicles in a fleet, Gina, roughly? 600,000. We have 600,000 federal vehicles that we, the federal government owns. They're going to all end up being electric vehicles, electric vehicles. That's what it means to finally make buying America a reality and not an empty promise. It means bringing manufacturing jobs back and building supply chains here at home. So we have better jobs at lower prices. And it means a federal government that just doesn't give lip service to buy America, but actually takes action, investing in innovation and manufacturing, which powers up companies like Tritium to do what they do best create great products and good paying jobs. That's been my approach from day one. And now we're seeing the results, beginning to see the results. My first full year as president, the economy created 6.6 .6 million new jobs. 6.6 .6 million. That's never happened before in American history. And that includes 375,000 manufacturing jobs. 2021 saw the highest increase in U.S. manufacturing jobs in nearly 30 years. And let me give you one example. A few weeks ago, the CEO of Intel, Pat uh, uh, Gelsinger, came to the White House to announce a new $20 billion semiconductor factory that they're going to, they call a campus outside of Columbus, Ohio. I had the two senators from Ohio here standing with me, one Republican, one Democrat, creating 7,000 construction jobs at that facility and 3,000 permanent jobs running the facility with an average salary running the facility at $135,000 a year. Those semiconductors, microchips, power virtually everything in our everyday lives. Cell phones, automobiles, refrigerators, the internet, the electric grid. Without semiconductors, those things are not, cannot fully function. So the spinoff of this is that we're going to create thousands of additional jobs, helping build America's products here in America, manufacturing automobiles and appliances, and so much more. And it's going to help ease inflation. One of the reasons automobiles cost so much is they're responsible for one-fifth of the recent inflation is because they lack semiconductors. They're not able to build them quick enough, so the price goes up higher because there's fewer to sell. Intel's announcement helps us fix that problem. And Intel isn't alone. Since 2021, companies have announced investments totaling 
more than $200 billion in domestic manufacturing here in America. From iconic companies like GM and Ford building out new electric vehicle production to Tesla, our nation's largest electric vehicle manufacturer, to innovative younger companies like Rivian building electric trucks or Proterra building electric buses, which I saw at a virtual tour last year when I met with the CEO on virtually, and they, they really impressed me. These companies joining Intel, bringing microchip manufacturing back to America after decades of decay. From Texas Instruments to Samsung in Texas to TSMC in Arizona, we're seeing the beginnings of an American manufacturing comeback. This is not hyperbole. This is real. This is genuine. This is real. You've heard me say all along when I was r r running in terms of God, the world's at an inflection point. Things are going to change in big ways. And this is one of those transition moments. Two weeks ago, I went to Pittsburgh, where the Union Pacific Railroad announced the largest purchase of American-made battery, 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 excuse me, electric battery locomotives in history, built by American workers in Erie, Pennsylvania. And these locomotives aren't only going to be sold here in America and take a hell of a lot of heck of a lot of pollution out of the air. They're going to be sold in countries around the world. They're going to be buying them, just like they're going to buy American-made electric cars. And just like we heard last week when Boeing announced $20 billion, a $20 billion bill, $20 billion deal right here in the White House to sell American-made aircraft to one of the major airlines in the Middle East, Qatar Airways, supporting tens of thousands of good-paying American manufacturing jobs. So we're seeing the same thing in planes, trains, and automobiles. Other countries recognize what's happening here. They want to buy American as well. They're ready to bet on America and American workers, workers who built the middle class, earning good pay and benefits and the right to organize. Today's announcement is part of the drumbeat of jobs resurgence, like anything more than anything we've seen before. And by the way, the House of Representatives passed a bill on Friday providing over $90 billion for research and development, manufacturing all those elements of the supply chain needed to produce end products right here in America. We can keep delivering more announcements like this one. And the House and Senate are working to deliver a final bill to my desk. The bottom line is the United States is in a position to outcompete the world once again. And I look forward to working with governors, Republican and Democrat, to keep that drumbeat going. So let's keep coming together to invest in the backbone of America and American manufacture and the workers who make it run. Because when we do, there's no limit to what we can achieve. None. Thank you, and may God protect our troops. We've got a lot to look forward to. Thank you very much. President, how was Macron's meeting with Putin? How was Macron's meeting with Putin, Mr. President?